We are back with more Shaq News Awards deliberations after a short break. Uh, this category is the best music of 2021. So I will open it up to the panel. Anyone oh, want to nominate? I got something, and I think it's going to titillate TJ. Guilty Gear Strive. Damn, it's good. It's damn good. <laughs> damn fine soundtrack there. Mighty fine. Oh man, I just love I love funky ass rock and roll shit and Guilty Gear. Just their their soundtracks always freaking shred. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is no different. And uh, yeah, it gets it gets my vote. Uh, I yeah, I have one that I hope uh, Ozzy Hero backing me up on. But uh, Life is Strange True Colors has excellent music. Um, I, I should really it, liked it. Yes. Yeah, a lot of great music, a lot of uh, music sung by the main character, which is probably going to factor into my best actor argument at some point. Uh, but I also loved in that game how, like, music is kind of ingrained in the story. You know, like, a record store, like, you can actually play music. Uh, there's a little feature where you can, like, enter a zen mode, where you, like, sit down and, like, put on a record. And it'll play a, a full song, and it'll just give you, like, beautiful scenic shots of the world. And you can just sit there as long as you want. Your character, like, has, like, unique animations, and you can just go up and leave. Um, but it's very uh, integral to that game and its theme, so I think uh, that one deserves a nod. And there are also moments where, like, you're up in the apartment, and before you can start your day, there's an acoustic guitar there that uh, that the main character's brother leads, and you can actually take the guitar and you can just like play an acoustic song, and it's actually really, really relaxing, if nothing else. Mm-hmm. But that was actually not going to be my nomination. My nomination is actually going to go to Bravely Default Two, and the the music in Bravely Default 2 is a lot of classic RPG stuff. You go you get your town music, you get your battle music. But the way they integrate like the classic like the classic video game sound to a lot of those battle themes and mix it with like metal and synth, like it makes you want to run through a brick wall. Like it's real it gets really intense. It's so it's so much fun. And it's it hasn't been I haven't been won over by like RPG music like this in a while. So I mean, I can. It's harder to throw in a visual aid the way I did with the Artful Escape earlier because you know it's audio and we're in the middle of recording. But I, I, w- I will throw the link in, uh, in Slack just so you guys can hear it on your off time. It's actually a really great soundtrack. And uh, and I'm gonna throw a second nomination out because I feel kind of dumb for not remembering this. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, got some bangers on it. I mean, it's got Blondie, Call Me, which is like one of my favorite Blondie songs. Tears for Fears, the Tears for Fears version of Everybody Wants to Rule the World. The w- just another way, banger. And the way they integrate the music, with whether it's with the huddle mechanic or whether it's just like you know Peter Quill just listening to it on his uh, on his Walkman, like I really like the way they they made the music work in that game. Yeah, and really- they actually made their own band too. And wrote a bunch of songs. Yeah, they they like. they re they made their own version of Star Lord's origin story, and basically mm-hmm. their version is P- there's a fictional band called Star Lord, and that is why Peter Quill took on that name, which is actually a pretty cool little twist. Yeah, I like that. It was so odd listening to the music in that game because I'm the the movies have conditioned me so entirely to th- when I think of Peter Quill's music to think of like folksy folk rock or and uh, disco and things like that but they leaned really heavy into like 70s 80s 70s 80s era metal in that game and it's like yeah. but there's also a bunch of new wave there's like yeah. a shit ton of new wave like flock of seagulls come on pat benatar to, to go with the uh... To continue on that whole theme of reimagining the origins, like Peter Quill in the in the movies was like an '80s child, but yeah. in in the game, his mom is the '80s child. Like when you first meet like like Meredith Quill, like she's got like the '80s hairdo and everything else. Like, and that's where that's where Peter gets the music from. So, I was curious too about that change in in like the soundtrack and the change in the style. But like after talking to some of the devs, like it made sense because. They wanted Peter to be born a little bit later. I think he's more of a '90s kid. Oh, that makes sense. That also give, explains the new kids on the block, Vanilla Ice haircut, a little bit more too. I think. 
Yeah, it's why like, it's why he it's why he doesn't look like Chris Pratt. Yeah. Then surprisingly, not, Star Lord not voiced by Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt is just voicing everybody else. He says they couldn't afford him. Probably it's probably millions of dollars. Well, Greg. Uh, yeah. Uh, any other nominations? I'd like to throw out one for a game I reviewed earlier this year called Backbone. It's kind of an adventure mystery game uh, set in the universe. Fictional uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. It's all pixel art and all the inhabitants of the town are animals. uh, Anthropomorphized or however the word is pronounced. Uh, You play a raccoon who is a private investigator and the whole game is set up like hard-boiled 1940s, you know, detective crime noir. The soundtrack in this game absolutely blew me out of my seat. It's an odd combination of real abrasive bebop jazz and pulsing synth and ambient, and then some uh, piano-driven ballads, which would be normal, I guess, in a jazz piano bar. Just a, an odd mix that is always in tune with everything that's going in the game. For me, it took over and became the main character, as I had some issues with the way the game kind of moved narratively once it got towards the end, but... There was never a time where I wasn't just having a big, stupid, shitting grin and everything I was hearing coming out of my speakers. As far as I know, the entire thing was an original soundtrack uh, for the project. Yep. But uh, I've still been playing it uh, constantly since I've been done with the game and cannot say enough good things. I mean, yeah. I agree with Chris on that one. Uh, I, I do something every November. I call it Noir November, and it was one of the games that I dived into. The soundtrack was awesome. Uh, kind of reminds me of a uh, another game that came out, uh, Genesis Noir. It had uh, some nice jazz elements too. But I was really impressed, really impressed with uh, just how seamless the uh, the soundtrack kept the the atmosphere they were trying to go for uh, going the entire time. So glad Chris brought it up. Yeah, I uh, I've heard. I I don't know if it was from your review or just video that I've seen of it, but I've definitely heard that that mashup style that you're talking about of like really you know chaotic jazz with like synths and like kind of more futuristic sounds and yeah it's good it's actually Mm -hmm. glad you brought that up because i honestly had no i normally feel strongly about a game's music uh i don't really i have some boring nominations i can make but i don't think i made it last year uh but yeah anyone else have a nomination throw one out for bowser's fury that was the one I was going to mention. Uh, I I like it it's... because it's it's got this like it's sort of whimsical but melancholy at the the same time as Mario music can can be. It really stirs your soul when you least expect it. Um, it does it like the Christmas nomination sounds awesome, but I just I just feel like Nintendo always like pulls out the the big guns for Mario soundtracks and. I just like how it goes from like kind of Isle Delfino feels uh, when Bowser's not around to like Mm -hmm. death metal chaos when Bowser shows up. That transition's great. That silence that occurs when Bowser's shell appears and then the music kicking in. Uh, Yeah, I this was going to be a nomination of mine if uh, no one else mentioned it. I think Nintendo has an amazing music department. Mm. Like, crazy good. Uh, if you remember Odyssey, if you've played Smash, if you've played the Mario Kart games, like, they just have really talented musicians over there. Yeah. And they sh- they shine in Bowser's Fury. The music is an indicator a lot of the time of what's about to happen in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it definitely plays a role. Uh, it's, it's important in that game. Uh, I think that's probably every nomination we might have missed some i i I saw uh the artful escape mentioned by some people just online um someone also mentioned sable has some good music in it uh yeah i think we got some good nominees here so let's let's put it to a vote i'll start with you david uh, I'm actually going to back Chris up. I, I nominated Bowser's Fury because I, I really love the music in that game, even though, you know, the gameplay was hit or miss for me. But, um, you know, Chris just sounded like he, like it was a major part of the experience that really pulled him in. And, uh, yeah, that's my pick. I like the style of Backbone, too. Like, it's it's a retro-looking game. 
Uh, yeah, and that that kind of music adds to that. Uh, it does. Setting. Yeah. In a uh, different world where other people wrote the narrative to that game, I could see that being my nomination for game of the year if I didn't absolutely hate the way the game went from a story perspective, because <laughs> everything else about it is just Italian hand gesture. Yeah. Chef's kiss. Nice. Uh, Denny, what you got here? Hmm. You know, I, I, like I said, I really, I really love the uh, soundtrack for background, but man, Guilty Gear is also really, really good. You know, like I can listen to that soundtrack all day long while playing. Um, uh, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with, uh, with Guilty. I'm gonna show, show Guilty some love. Look, there's no wrong votes here. These are all very talented musicians. Work very hard on these soundtracks and these environment audio design. Donovan, what you got? I'm uh, gonna stick with my life is strange true colors pick for this one. Nice. I just have a real quick question. Doesn't Deathloop have some solid music? It does. It does yeah. yeah. And it's, it's very fine. adaptive to how you play the game. Yeah. I just wanted to throw that out there. I I noticed it in my short time with it, but I really like the score, like the overall yeah. score. Yeah. Uh, Greg. Our music expert. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm gonna use my my pass on this one because it's between Life is Strange and Guilty Gear because both of those soundtracks are really, really good and they're both extremely different. So I'll pass for now. Okay. TJ. Music is built into the very DNA of Guilty Gear to the point where like a lot of the characters themselves are named after uh, Daisuke uh, Ishiwatari's favorite bands like mm -hmm. it is and and to its credit it's like they always i always get the special edition of the game because i want to have that soundtrack just in my library to listen to even outside the game but they this was the first year that they incorporated vocals into all of the music in the game mm. which i thought was going to be weird at first hearing vocals over over a fighting game but damn, they do a good job with it. The guy that they have working on doing the vocals, and actually the crew that they have doing vocals in this game, is incredible. Um, and it's like it's evolved beyond heavy metal as well. Like there's a lot of jazz, jazzy elements in this. There's a there's a lot of there's a sick bass line in Giovanna's theme uh, that makes me think of things like Primus. Yeah. Uh, sure. There's a uh, there's a lot of jazzy elements in Ka Happy Chaos's new theme, and the new characters' music is the new character music is always so damn good too. I hmm. I listen to this music more than I've listened to any music <laughs> throughout the entire year, and I I gotta give it to Guilty Gear Strive. They they killed it with this soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Ozzy, are you sticking with Life is Strange? No, oh, I'm no, going. Bro, I'm, default, I'm going with sorry. Bravely Default too, and I want. Sorry. And in terms of like atmosphere, it it captures every every essence of a JRPG. But also, I want to touch on like my favorite, just my favorite feature of a Bravely Default game in general is that whenever somebody uses a special move during a battle, they'll get like the big bombastic animation and they'll hit with a big attack. But their theme music will play behind them. You'll get a party wide buff, but the buff only lasts for as long as the music goes. So you have to get your shit in before the song's over. And I absolutely love that every time. And it really got me this time around, too. Nice. I should pick that game up someday. You can pick it up on PC, but you can also get it on Switch. I'm going to get it on Switch because that's a grindy ass game. I need to play it in handheld. Bill, what you got? Backbone. Backbone. Uh, didn't even have to think twice. Just fired it up. Um, Blake. I know you're not as much of a musician as Greg, but I, I would, figure you might have an opinion here. I would like to... It's it's going to be Mrs. Elliot <laughs> uh, for the win. Mrs. Uh, no. Elliot. <laughs> no. Uh, That's a good call. Cody Shack cast listen. God damn. No, I mean... From eight years ago at this point. It's tough, man. I, I I love some tasty, tasty music. Um, and there are so many tasty things. Always, there's always so much good music. Mm -hmm. Always has been. Always will be. Um, backbone. Uh, I might have to go. I went to I, I went to school to play like jazz bass. Uh, I'm 
might have to, you know, throw throw it to backbone just just for that legacy. Okay. Uh, Chris, I'm assuming you're on backbone. Yes, I'll uh, I'll back that one. You'll back that bone. Pun intended. So, my vote doesn't matter. Uh, oh, it might. Hold on. Let's see if did Sam vote for best music. Without even looking, without even looking, I can take a wild guess what Sam voted for. (laughs) Sam would have voted for some Gregorian chant like it was the 90s. He voted for Halo. All All jokes aside, and Sam is a piece of garbage, but I do admit that during the times when I was forced to wait (laughs) in the menu for the Halo Infinite multiplayer because people that don't have SSDs are also allowed to play, is occasionally they play (laughs) non-Gregorian monk chants in that game that sounds a lot like Mogwai-style post-rock stuff. Yes. And I greatly appreciated that, but those chants can can get fucked. I will say, <laughs> there's less chanting in the single player and more of that Mogwai style. Yeah, I'm always down for that good stuff. I was actually surprised when I did hear it in the menu of the multiplayer. I was like, oh dang. I played, a, played way too much of this game in the last day, and the music in the campaign is, is very good. Uh, I'm not voting for it, but yeah. I just want to let yeah. Sam's vote counts. Sam's nomination counts. Halo Infinite is nominated, and he voted for it. Uh, yeah, I, I while we were talking, I just I pulled up uh, some Backbone songs. I pulled up some uh, Bravely Default songs. Track both... twenty, track twenty on disc one is yeah. probably the best boss music I've heard in years. You're just assembling yourself a hot playlist for the week. Yeah, uh, so both those games are excellent when it comes to music and. Uh, David's nomination to Bowser's Fury is very sound. Like, that is... I, I love Mario games, and I love Mario music, and uh, I love Super Mario 3D World. Uh, that game is, like, a very happy vibe for a lot of it. I, and, I love that soundtrack. I just I didn't bring it up because it's, like, what, technically a it's 2013 release. Yeah. yeah. Why I bring yeah. it up is that Bowser's yeah. Fury really... It feels like 3D World while feeling like a new thing, and that that yeah, the way yeah. that it feels like 3D World is definitely through the music when Bowser isn't around. When Bowser yeah. appears, it feels like a very brand new thing. Uh, so you know, maybe in a different universe, I would have voted for this, but I really think Backbone, uh, the music specifically, adds to the experience uh, mm-hmm. and is like important. Uh, like Chris probably wouldn't have. He even said he wouldn't have liked this game as much without the music. So I'm gonna put my vote behind Backbone, and that is a win for Ben. Sorry, Guilty Gear. Sorry, all these other games. All these music scores are great, uh, and you know, Guilty Gear's won some other awards. It's not, it's not getting left out. So yeah, best music of 2021 goes to Backbone. I don't think anyone saw that coming. 